is. But um, welcome to Scope and Sequence, three mistakes I made mapping my courses. I am apologize, I'm a, running a few minutes late. Uh, so my name is Nicole Van Tassel, creator of this group and founder of iExplore Academy, and that is the professional development program for the NGSS. Basically, my goal is to help help you develop and implement a 3D curriculum um, for your classroom. So today we're going to be talking about the mistakes that I made when I was first transitioning to the NGSS and I was mapping out my scope and sequence. So I am a big picture kind of thinker. I love big ideas. I don't really like the details as much. Um, I so I really always enjoyed like mapping out big units and I really enjoy mapping out um, like, yeah, my year long sequence and all of that. Uh, but I totally did it wrong when I first got started. And so I'm going to share with you some of my biggest mistakes uh, with the goal that hopefully you can learn from them. <laughs> okay, so before we get started, though, I do want to just highlight um, at the end of this month, I'm going to be doing an NGSS Storylines boot camp. So my goal with this program, it's totally free. You can register at icefloorscience.com backslash storylines. And the goal is that you're going to understand like what a storyline really looks like. It is not just your normal activities like reordered um, because that's what a lot of like, I mean, that's what I thought for a while. Like, oh, I just order my store, my activities in a different way and it's, it's in a storyline. No. Um, we're going to create a basis storyline for your classroom because that's the backbone of your more complicated NGSS units. So you'll be able to do it during our boot camp and then you'll know how to do it again. It's a very three step process. Um, I actually call them my three, three step storylines or what was that? Three, three, three step simple storylines or something like that. I can't remember. I have a name for them. I just haven't used it lately. Um, and then we're going to look at how you can actually be putting your um, three dimensional teaching to work in your classroom each and every day. So as we're developing your like three part simple storyline, I think it was something like that, you will know how to actually make each of those activities three dimensional. And I see you are not seeing any of the things that I'm seeing. I hate it when it's, there it goes, boot camp. Um, so if you want to register for our boot camp, totally free at the end of the month, um, please join us for that. Okay, so now we will dive into what we're talking about. That's not right. Okay, so. This is what we're going to be talking about. Um, the one thing that I forgot and that I missed doing for a really long time. I was like way into doing a lot of things right with the NGSS before I realized this one thing. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to be talking about this idea of creating course lines instead of webs. and Or like we should be making webs. I was making lines. Um, and then just this balancing of our schedule and our students. Okay, so the one thing I wasn't including, and I didn't put the word on here because <laughs> I feel like everybody's going to be so sick of me talking about this, but it's the P word, it's phenomena. Um, I know we talk about phenomena a lot, but it's really, really important, and it is the probably the last thing I really started to truly understand. I was doing all of the 3D stuff. I was hitting like all of my content standards. I was, I was matching it up to actually what's in the evidence statements to what's on the disciplinary core ideas. I was having my students, I was doing the 3D, the 3D instruction. I was having my students explore and discover. I was using the 5e model for that. The 5e model is awesome. I love it. It's a way, great way to guide your students through these different stages of learning to understanding. Um, I was integrating science and engineering practices daily in bite-sized pieces as well as focusing my activities around, you know, one or the other, or like them in, in, in all of their different, quick side note, um, we are always aiming to incorporate all three dimensions, but you're going to sometimes focus on one more than another. So I was equally incorporating all of them while also sometimes focusing on, you know, some practices and sometimes focusing on concepts and sometimes focusing on content, but always tying in bits and pieces of the others. Anyway, I was doing a lot of things really, really good and I thought I was on the right track, but I was not tying it together with phenomena. I wasn't using a big anchor. And then even when I started using my big anchor, I wasn't using investigative level phenomena I wasn't actually tying things back to my anchor all the time. I, I wasn't. I wasn't really. You. I wasn't really doing like phenomenon based instruction, and it took me a long time to realize that the NGSS are not meant to be these standards that we check off like one by one by one. 
the NJ says it's really about doing science. And now we're kind of getting into a little bit more of like a broader under discussion about the nature of science education. Yeah, we have a like baseline that we want our students to know. These are the disciplinary core ideas. We have our skills we want our students to understand and all of that. But really, we our goal is to teach our students to do science. And we do that by teaching them how to investigate phenomena. Because if they can invest, if they know the skills to investigate phenomena, they know how to go out into the world later on and figure things out on their own. And obviously we want them to have those core disciplinary ideas to help them make sense of those things that they encounter and the experiences they have and all of that. But really when we are thinking about teaching, we need to go beyond this idea that we are teaching these standards to this bigger idea that we are teaching our students to do science or to be scientists. Whether or not they ever pursue science careers, it doesn't matter. I mean, scientists is, there's a quote out there and I used it in some other workshop recently, but it was like that science is basically a way that we organize our curiosity. We're all curious about things. Under, teaching our students to, students to be scientists is going to just help them give them a framework for understanding anything in the world that they are curious about and that they want to learn about and then that they want to learn about in a very systematic and logical and um, like productive way. So we want our students to become scientists even if they don't pursue careers in scientists. It's about that science worldview and, and way of understanding the natural world and yada yada. Anyway, we do that by thinking bigger than just checking off standards, we do that by actually engaging our students in investigating phenomena. And this is one thing that I took me a really, really long time to do. So what we, what I wasn't doing, I was doing all the right things in terms of my like activities. If you look at the activity level, I was doing the three-dimensional instruction. I was doing, um, the exploration and the explore before explain approaches, but I wasn't tying to that phenomena to that real world relevance or um, to like the big picture integration. And so my my classroom looked kind of like um, just a a hodgepodge of activities and not a cohesive unit storyline. Um, and that's why when you're building your storylines, we want our storyline, like storylines are all about investigating phenomena. So instead of creating these like hodgepodge units where we're just picking and choosing different activities that we've done and that our students might like, when we're developing our storylines, we're actually investigating one phenomena and tying in activities that are going to help us understand that one phenomena. That also helps us clarify what content should we be teaching. And this was a discussion that came up, I don't know, in some other post about like who says what we have to teach. Well, there's these broad ideas um, of these, our disciplinary core ideas are pretty broad. The phenomena we choose is going to help us determine like which cell organelles are the most relevant here or which body systems are the most important here. Um, which examples are we going to use? Which interactions in ecosystem, um, like which examples of these are going to make the most sense here? So by choosing our phenomena, we're kind of narrowing our content. That also has a flip side. It's kind of a little chicken and egg here, though. Um, choosing our, we want to choose our phenomena to hit specific content as well. So it's kind of a balancing act. You look at your standards, you identify the content that you're targeting, you choose your phenomena based on that content, but your phenomena also helps you, your phenomenon also helps you um, narrow down the examples you use and the specific pieces of content you include um, on assessments or on in activities and things like that. So the one thing that I made, the mistake I made is I was not incorporating phenomena into my scope and sequence planning, into my unit planning. I was just willy nilly kind of going through um, hitting my standards without having this cohesive approach to each of my bundles. What else was I doing? Um, failure to integrate. So along those lines, like I said, the NGSS are not just these um, standards that we're checking off one by one. That would be a line. But if you look at my earlier scope and sequences, they were, I was literally just moving through standards one at a time. I had bundled them in a sense where like all of these, bun all of these standards were together and they were in the same unit 
but they were pretty much just, okay, this instructional sequence, I'm addressing this, this standard, check mark. This sequence, I'm addressing this standard, check mark, and, and moving through it. I didn't realize that I was actually supposed to be integrating the standards within the bundle. So this doesn't matter if you're disciplinary specific or if you are like an integrated because you're still doing the same thing. In a single series of lessons, and this is what I would call an instructional sequence, I might be addressing part of one standard on climate and part of one standard on, a, on the water cycle if I'm in disciplinary specific classroom. If I'm in a, an integrated classroom, I might be addressing part of a standard on climate and part of a standard on resource availability. So in a series of three or four classes, I am taking bits and pieces of a single performance expectation or a single standard, disciplinary core idea, um, whichever part you wanna look at. I'm taking bits and pieces of those and putting them together. So while my students are um, understanding I don't know, like let's say let's do the water cycle and resource availability. While they're understanding that, um, I don't know, let's do, let's do climate. While they are understanding that climate um, being near like bodies of water regulates the climate, you know, it's that you don't get those extreme temperatures, they could also understand how that impacts the plant life um, or in, in that region and because it, because there's no like freezing or something like that. I don't know. That's not a very good example. I'm not good at making examples on the fly. I apologize. And I hadn't gotten that far of making examples. But either way, you are actually like integrating them into your specific little sequences. Um, so that within your whole unit, your standards are actually blended together. And again, the reason for this is because we're tying back to the, this phenomena. To get a really like rounded, robust understanding of a natural phenomenon, you have to investigate more than one concept at a time to truly understand, like, I don't, uh, again, I didn't think of an, an example, and now I wish I had. But to truly understand, like, a phenomenon, you have to understand more than just, more than just one aspect of it. If you even think of, like, something like a, um, a, like, food webs and things like that, we often teach food webs, but we're not teaching, like, atoms and molecules and things like that at the same time, where our students would probably have a much better understanding of how matter and energy is moving through an ecosystem if you are also teaching those, you know, physical science standards at the same time, right? Because they tie together. So in the same way, when we can actually integrate our standards, we can get a much better understanding of phenomena. Um, and that's why, like, in our in I Explore Academy, the storylining process, like, we bundle our standards first. That's, that's the first part. And that's what I had done correctly. I had bundled my standards. But then we go into our bundles, and we break down our objectives, and we write down all of the objectives for our unit. And these are the objectives that we are creating based on our standards. And then we rebundle those objectives so that I'm actually combining the objectives for all of my standards into their own little instructional sequences. And you might have like, sure, one sequence might be heavy in one standard because obviously there's a lot of connections, but I'm still bringing in elements of the other standards because again, my goal is not just checking off the standards, it's actually tying to phenomena. Um, so that's one thing. I was not integrating, I was just moving along a little line. In reality, we wanna create like a web where all of these different standards are like tying together and, and feeding into this, this understanding of the phenomenon. Uh, so it's a, it, it's a lot trickier. The design process is much more difficult and much trickier. There's a lot of moving pieces and a lot of moving parts, and it is hard to do. Um, and you, you get better at it over time. So if you're thinking like, oh my goodness, I cannot do this. This is way too much. Um, I One recommendation is don't try to do like 12 standards at once. You know, start with maybe two or three within one unit. Um, and then you can expand that out. But also just, you know, take baby steps. If you can just integrate bits and pieces at a time, you're going to eventually find, oh, it's, it's easier to, to do it over time. Um, it all just comes more naturally the more you do it. And I, I know that's like, I don't mean to say that as like a cop out because there's obviously a lot of strategies and that's literally what I try to teach all of the 
my, my teachers in I Explore Academy, but part of it is the more you do it, the more comfortable it gets. So don't give up, I guess is my, my, my goal here. <laughs> don't give up. Um, and lastly, like pacing. So this is one where I don't like have a specific, um, I mean, I don't have any specific like recommendations here, but pacing decisions. I made a lot of mistakes on my pacing guide because I was basically trying to create a pacing guide that looked like my districts. And my districts pacing guide had, the old one was like week one, this topic, week two, this topic. Actually, it went even further and said like chapter one, this topic, chapter two, this topic. And they were broken down by weeks, they were broken down by topic and standard. That does not work for the NGSS for all of the reasons we just said because we're integrating, because we're not just checking off boxes, because we are investigating phenomena, because students take a little bit more time to explore and they might take longer in one area and shorter in another. So with that in mind, we need to make decisions about pacing differently than we did before. I see a lot of teachers that try to look at design an NGSS unit or even take an NGSS unit from like Open Syed or maybe one of mine or um, wherever and they try to fit it into their district's pacing guide and I totally understand because you're like my district told me I have to keep this pacing but the reality is you're not going to be able to match it up exactly just because of the way that the NGSS works because you're spending more time on exploration because you are um, trimming some of this content here so that you can have that extra time um, because it's just organized differently. So if you don't have the freedom to make those pacing decisions, like there's, you can do things like try to group the topics. Like if you see this, this unit covers weather and and resource availability and water cycle and climate and it, my district allots, allots four weeks to that, well, I'm just gonna clump them together and I'm gonna call this whole unit my four week weather, climate, resource availability, water cycle unit. I mean, you can do that. Um, but if you do have the freedom to make changes, I would just encourage you to kind of set aside the thinking of this topic this week, this topic this week, and perhaps instead think about it like, this instructional sequence investigating this phenomenon, I'm allotting this much time to. This instructional sequence investigating this phenomenon, I'm allotting this much time to. And kind of going from there with that. Um, and you're going to have to adjust your, your, your pacing because you're going to find that, like, again, your students might fly through exploration in one unit and really struggle with it in another unit. You're also going to find that students at the beginning of the year when they're not used to having to like figure it out, just take longer to do it all. They take longer to make meaning. They take longer to get through the explorations. They take longer to even ask questions and engage with the phenomenon initially. Like all of this stuff takes longer earlier on. So you might want to give a little bit of extra like buffer space or whatever to those units early on. Um, and, and know that, um, you know, it'll, it'll be a little bit easier the more comfortable they get with it. Another thing to consider is, I, I often also hear this, like the NGSS is a baseline. It is your, you know, this is the base level that we want our students to achieve by the time they graduate. So knowing it's a baseline, there's never anything wrong with going further. And that's why in like elective classes, in honors classes, um, you're going to go outside the content of the standards. You can always be into, you can always be um, using three-dimensional approaches and exploration-based approaches, but your content may go beyond it. That said, when you are in a like traditional base level class, so you're not in an elective and you're not in like an honors level class, sometimes you might find that even in like a base level class, your students breeze through a unit and you 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 kind of fly through this content. They do re really they do really well with it. They remember it from previous years, whatever. They just they do really well. So then teachers have to kind of make this decision, do I go further? Do I go into the high school content? Do I like go beyond um, what is like written in the standards? And I don't have like a right or wrong answer for this. This is just things that you want to think about. One thing that I would just encourage you to think about is just because your students flew through like this 
section or th these concepts doesn't mean that they're going to fly through additional concepts later in the year. And you may want to say, okay, we, we can just finish this unit early. We can just accept that we moved through it faster than I thought we would. And that will give us a little bit of a buffer space later on if we need more time later on. Because there's, it's always, you know, awful when you spend, I don't want to say too much time, but you need more time at the beginning of the year. And then you find like you're rushing through things at the end of the year because you know you're not going to finish your, your units. And the NGSS, like we're trying to move away from that rushed feeling. We're trying to give our students the space they need to explore. But we also still want to hit our objectives and meet our standards and prepare our students for whatever assessments our district or state or whatever are going to give us. So, you know, it's that balance. Um, so that's just one thing to consider. If your students do, do really well on something, it might be worth considering, even if they could go farther, I don't necessarily need to take them farther myself because they will get it in high school or they will get it the next year or wherever it is. And I might need that time later on when we tackle these concepts that they might struggle with. That said, if you think that, nope, I think they'll be able to handle everything, let's just keep going, that's okay too. Because again, the NGSS are your baseline and if your students can go farther, then they can go farther. Um, so I don't wanna say, like I don't have a right or wrong answer. These are just things that you might wanna consider. Um, one thing that you can do though, so I don't have like easy answers to pacing, like I said. Um, the best thing that you can do though, if you find you are like struggling with time, your students are taking a really long time to move through these things. So you can guide your students through explorations to get them where they need to be. And I have several articles on the I Explore Science blog that give you some strategies for guiding student explorations. There's quest there's a blog post about questioning, um, and I can post it if I remember um, in the chat here when we're done, um, but how you can use questioning to guide students. There is a post about support stations that you can use to help support and guide students through their exploration. Um, there might be a couple other ones too. You can also pay attention to where they're struggling and where they take longer and um, use that knowledge for next year and adjust your pacing. Um, but you can also in those areas perhaps trim some of the like content facts and figures and focus more on the big co like core ideas. So you don't get hung up on, you know, making them memorize all of the details if they're already struggling with the big ideas and just focus more on those core ideas for that specific unit. And then always just evaluate your activities. Like ask yourself, is this, is this investigation or is this activity driving your investigation of the phenomenon forward? Is it helping students understand the disciplinary core idea? Is it adding in science and engineering practices or cross-cutting concepts, um, experience with those things? Just because you've done it before or taught it before, just because your students like it doesn't mean it's necessarily relevant or should be a part of your NGSS storyline now. And if you really, really, really wanna include it, then you need to find a way to tie it into your phenomenon so it is driving your students forward, um, your students understanding forward and helping them understand the phenomenon under investigation and understand the big disciplinary core idea that they can apply to new phenomena as well. Um, questioning to guide students are a definite help. Yes, um, there's, I have a couple um, like blog posts on that as well. There's also a resource from FOSS, um, and I'll see if I can find it online, that has some, res um, so has some good ideas on thinking about how you can use questioning to guide students' meaning making. Uh, so I'll see if I can find that one to share as well. But, um, but yeah, so those are some things that you can do when you do get kind of stuck with pacing uh, and, and tr just needing to move your students forward. We, we really want to try to avoid falling back into like, oh, I'm out of time, so I just need to tell my students the content. Like, we really want to try to not do that. Um, sometimes I get that it happens, but whenever you can still just continue to do the exploration and continue to... In integrate the three dimensions that's obviously going to lead to better learning for your students so um but um, again it's all these are just decisions you kind of have to make okay so as usual um if you are new to the ngss i highly recommend you check out the kickstarter ha intro to the ngss mini course 
You're going to um, figure out like what it means, what the NGSS means for your content and like the trick to covering it all. There's not really a trick, it's just you don't cover it all. Um, the, you know, why your students are gonna be naturally invested in your NGSS units. It starts with those storylines and that's why I hope you will join us for our NGSS Storylines Bootcamp. And, um, and really how you can shift ownership in the classroom from the teacher to the student. And that's where your exploration and your discovery and all of that comes in. Um, and as always, you are invited to join us at iExplore Academy. We have some workshops coming up at the end of the month. We're going to be looking at sense making and online settings for those of you who are looking at a hybrid model or a fully online model for the fall. Um, we're going to be doing some workshops on, we did one on exploration online last month. The replay is, in, is available for all of our iExplore Academy members. We are going to be doing one on sense making next week, I think, and then relationships is the week after. It might be switched, I can't remember. But either way, two workshops, two live workshops in iExplore Academy this month, sense making and relationship building if you're in an online classroom or in any sort of online setting. Um, I also do school and district programs, so if your district is looking for support with implementing the NGSS, getting teachers on board with the NGSS, questions about it, questions about the 5E model, any of those things, I would love to work with you and your teachers. Um, and then lastly, please remember NGSS Storylines Bootcamp starts at the end of the month. It is a week-long experience. It's pretty much asynchronous. Um, there's a couple live things on Thursday and Friday. Um, that said, if you are a member of iExplore Academy, you can access everything right now immediately. So please don't forget about that. Any of you members who are watching, I can't see who's watching. Um, so you can go ahead and check out the whole boot camps already available inside iExplore Academy. Um, but anybody else can join us on July 27th and look at creating some NGSS storylines for some simple three-part storylines for your NGSS classroom that you can use as a backbone for building your um, NGSS curricula. All right, thanks so much for tuning in. I am glad you're able to make it today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Monday and I will chat with you guys later. Have a good one.